Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, so today we're going to talk about selling people on our hotkey. Awesome, man. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. It's Jackie in Denmark with Joe in Dallas, Texas. Great. So today we're talking about selling people on our hotkey. And it's one of those topics where it's it really is a big thing and most people who become fans of our hotkey or however you want to put it will at some point try and sell others around them on the concept of automating tasks it can be almost all kinds of tasks it can be work tasks it can be game tasks it can be normal small task it can be hotkeys it can be hot strings it can be all kinds of things you would try to sell other people on um, but joe had a great point well i was reading this book from dan i forget which one it was from dan kennedy in a in it he said people are not looking for prevention they're looking for the cure right and and that's what really for me it was like you know what this is without a hotkey in it and they talk about in advertising too is don't don't sell the steak sell the sizzle Right, sell what makes it sexy. Sell the sell the fun stuff, and it, it really occurred to me. Like, and I know I think I've done it a lot more than Jackie has, but I I try to convince people to start learning Auto Hotkey, and I'll spend time with them, and they get excited, and like I, I show them all they can do, and it's great. And then I say, okay, well, here's how you start learning how to do the stuff. In and, and it's like that's when they finally realize, oh, it's not just a pill. It's not just a program that like I just get and it's done. You know, I have to learn how to adapt this for my needs, right? And and that's where, boy, it's just most people, oh, I'm too busy. You know, I don't have enough time to, to do this. It's ironic, but that's what how they feel. Yeah, the, the one that's one of the interesting parts because I don't really know what makes a person use other hotkey or other tools that, that needs um this kind of problem solving together with the thing, because most of the time people will go look for the solution for their problem. How do I add multiple rows onto the table I'm working on? They're not looking for a programming language that will let them customize exactly how many rows they'll add each time they press F4. Right. That's not really what they're looking for. They're just looking for a tool that will let them add multiple roles with a single key or whatever. So, yeah, absolutely. That's one of the hard parts. And uh, for me, myself, when I learned about a hard, hard key, it wasn't really the idea of being able to copy multiple things at the same time that got me hooked on it per se. It was the thing I was trying to do. And our hotkey was the thing that came up that could do it. But as soon as I'd seen that it was just text, pretty readable text yeah. that was doing the thing, I became intrigued with how can I then tweak it, tweak it to do a little more, maybe doing it even a little differently, whatever it might be. But getting from finding the thing that does it over to actually tweaking the thing that does it. I'm not sure where you will sell, where you'll find people you can sell that idea to. Yeah, and actually, Jackie, I, I think you brought up a really, really good point. Is it's the fundamentals of the vast majority of people. You know, they, they the second we show them code, it it doesn't. You were smart enough to look at it and go, but I can read this. You know, it's code, but I can read it. Right, the vast majority of people see a coding solution and instantly think I'm not a coder. It's basically they're saying, I don't speak that language for, you know, literally not auto hotkey, but you know what I mean? It's a, you know, I'm not a programmer and therefore I'm not learning. I can't learn this. Right. So they, they look for a GUI way. How do I manually do this? Right. And it's sad, but, um, but I think that's one of the first things is, is if maybe if we get better about saying, I know this is code, but don't, don't freak out. Like in, it's it's readable, it's easy, you know. Some of the stuff we do, yeah, it's much DLL calls and stuff, much you know more advanced. But the the basics are very simple, right? And it is so repeatable. But it's, I think you really nailed it. It's like 
most people want, how do I, they think, they're thinking, how do I manually do what I want to do? Not automated, you know, write a program to do this repeated. And even then, if if someone stumbled upon like a macro recorder for doing it, where it was GUIs, what do you think? I think a lot of people would start looking at it and doing it. You know, they, they give it a try. I, I recently had a colleague who didn't want to set up uh, topography in Word uh, to to make sure that her um, template was always doing that thing she was changing. I was like, but but why not? If if every time you make a headline, you want it to be two characters larger, why doesn't we just change the topography of that in your template? If you're using that each time and you're doing that action, let's set it up that way. But no, no, maybe I don't want it to be two types bigger each time. Okay, but... 90% of the time you do right. 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 So, so yeah, but it, it's hard getting uh, people to change habits and, but stuff. you know, Jackie, and, and in a personal case, so, you know, back in my undergrad, a little bit before undergrad and junior college and there, I was using word and I got really tired, especially working with other teams and people. And then we'd have a class report that, you know, everyone would work on and we'd try to, put it together and they would look Frankenstein like crazy stuff. And so I learned about styles and word and how you can build styles and control so many things. Right. And basically I didn't think about it. Right? Don't know. You can have a hotkey assigned to select the text, click it and applies that style to whatever. And, uh, Oh my word, like my reports went from looking crazy to looking desktop published like really looking professional and i just i tell my group i'm like just give it to me i'll deal with the don't worry about the formatting whatever you do like trust me like i'm gonna i'm gonna you know do it with a hot you know with, with my styles and hotkeys and uh but i hadn't really thought about it but i'm like i bet you that actually it was like a baby step into programming so to speak you know what i mean it got me in that mindset of of realizing it really is like a, a hot key for formatting, so to speak. Yeah, and and I'd, I'd say I'd love to have that golden egg or goose or whatever you'd say that that made sure that I could sell other people on a hot key. But if I can't even sell them on using a little bit more advanced functionality in, in Excel or Word, getting them far enough to actually sell them on something not on a hotkey that isn't even specific to a, a program, but something they can use more generally. I could probably give them a nice hot string script and they'd be happy to have it, but getting them to then change it or customize it for their need. I'm seeing it currently in, um, uh, one of the programs we use, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, for for some of the work order stuff that we're doing and stuff like that. Even getting people to customize the columns they see, it's it's still a little bit uphill, right? They they'll just let it be and and scroll fifteen minutes to the left until they find the value they need, right? Um, but who knows yeah. why? It's like that. I was on a call with a college student that he's in the program I was in 20 years ago, right? And, and he he's actually, he's learning out of hockey. He he got interested in stuff, and so I'm helping him. And uh, we were doing some, I was showing him how my automated graphs in Excel, and, and I showed him, and then I showed, I said, well, you know, I wrote this thing like 10 years ago. I don't know if it'll work. And then I, he mentioned something, and I said, well, you know, in Excel, you can, you know, um, hit record and do the stuff and then go look at the VBA behind it. And he was blown away. He didn't know like that was even a thing. And he's like, how is this not like, you know, well-known? And I'm like, you know, 20 years ago, you know, 30 years ago, it was pretty well-known, you know, and now it, it is, it's sad. That's, it's kind of a mystery. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was cool that he's, he's interested and he's learning it. But, um, and which actually brings me to my next, my getting back into our point here is, which you mentioned also is, is it needs to be very relevant. A solution that they need, like that is one of the best ways I found is to provide something for them 
uh, you know, you write it, you give it to them. Um, and then hopefully with, with your case of hot strings, hopefully if you have one and they're like, oh, but I really wish it didn't have this comma in here. You're like, well, oh, you know what? That's where it's very important to stop doing is like when you're a parent, don't just do it for them, you know, sit with them and, and show them how to change it. Teach them to fish basically, right? So I think may, maybe that is the selling it on a hockey is to the first time through, give them something, you write something for them and let them get used to using it. And then after that, ease them into actually making some changes. And, and I think we both agree hot strings are a great place. Hot strings and hot keys are probably the, a great place to start, right, of simplicity. Yeah. One of the things I've also found, at least with colleagues that are totally noobs to, to programming and stuff like that, is with a small um, hot string thing, a uh, small uh, auto hot key script or whatever it might be, um, Open it in Notepad. Yeah, Seems to okay. be more successful than opening it in a colorful editor. Interesting. Because apparently they they get it that it's plain text. It's just it, it's, it's, it's yeah, just text. exactly. It, it's text. They don't notice all that. It, of course, when the script becomes more complex, it makes a lot more sense for you to visually quickly be able to <laughs> dissect it. But as a, right. as a newbie who needs to focus on the actual characters that are there uh, and having stuff pretty much line by line and not having large sections that are jumping around and stuff like that, when you keep that in plain text, they seem to read what's on the screen compared to looking at it and be like, why are the percentage signs purple or whatever it might be? Questions that are mostly unrelated to actually reading the code. No, that's interesting. I, I could see how it's quite possible keeping it simpler and, and just like you said, making them realize it's just text, you know, um, it, that's a good first step, right? Because you're, tr I'm sure there's a better way to phrase it, but you're, you're really trying to get people to just start to fish, you know, and don't make it so complicated that they like they're just afraid of it, right? So make it so simple, yeah. That that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I've I've also been sitting there, and we had a few hotkeys that were doing some simple things. They wanted them to do more. I even had a live session where they were looking at me coding, um, which was fine for for that task. But as soon as it became complex enough and I had to explain what each line did, the, the, the interaction with the code became less, might be a way of putting it. Um, or at least that's what I've felt a few times. I've also had someone where I explain the code and say, this is what we did. This does that. This does this. And then not really being interested. And then by necessity, by me leaving the company, oh. like that, <laughs> reaching out to me. And at least two separate times, they didn't actually ask me to fix it. They asked for help with fixing it themselves. So my hope for them was that I actually did make them intrigued enough. And mm -hmm. there are some, probably some humbleness and stuff like that where they don't want to keep contacting me because at some point I might actually ask for money or whatever. Um, just the idea of them actually trying to take that on made me semi-happy at least. It's awesome. So if, if you guys have any other thoughts of how to, how to best sell auto hotkey, you know, and get people to start using it, uh, let me know. But I, I think we've outlined some good ideas of, of how to really kind of get people to start thinking about it and using it. Yeah, if you have that golden thing, absolutely. Let us know. We'd love to know that one. Yeah. Amen. All right. See ya. Yeah, bye.